All right, welcome back. Well, let's take a look at our latest candidate for President of the United States, actually the first to throw her hat in the ring, which is Nikki Haley, former governor of South Carolina. Nikki, we wish you great success. We're going to draw you now and see how that goes. So, you know, we all have very unique features. In fact, there's nobody in the history of the world that's been made like you or ever will be in history. You're unique in the history of the world. Each person is. Isn't that amazing? And we're going to draw Miss Haley. Now, I don't have a great photograph of her. This is my new print off my, my printer. And it's the first time I've printed anything off of it. But we'll have to go with it for now. And we take a look at some of the features of Miss Haley. And she has uh, somewhat of, uh, I guess, Indian descent, as she has spoken about before. We can see a little bit of that in her. Uh, certainly, I think what stands out with Miss Haley is maybe three things I want to point out here today. One is she has big, dark eyes, all right? And we want to highlight that. Uh, she's got thin lips, all right? Both bottom and top. Of bottom lip would usually be thicker anyway than the top one, but either way, they're, they're thin lips. And she also has a prominent chin. Now, this is a point I can make this assessment that as caricaturists, we get to reverse political correctness. We can have candor about facial features. You're not going to go up to somebody and say, oh my, what a long nose you have, or what are those deep furrows you have under your eyes, or you have a protruding upper lip that's kind of funny looking. You're not going to say that to somebody. That's not appropriate. But as artists, and particularly caricature artists, well, the door is open for all candor about facial features. That's the fun part of this, is we get to talk about it. And again, every feature we've been given is a gift of God anyway. And so it adds and enhances our natural beauty, no matter who we are, what our walk of life, what our age. And so we can talk about that with Miss Haley as well. I'm sure she won't mind. So uh, let's begin our drawing. By the way, that reference of being unique in creation, we were knit together in our mother's womb we're fearfully and wonderfully made. That's from Psalm 139. Check that out. Now, on the eye here, these big, dark eyes. Let's go with uh, like that. I'm going to sort of uh, bring it around and like that. Now, the white of the eye is visible here. About, on the average, 50% of the eye is the white, or I guess sclera of the eye, if you want to get into terms, we'll get into a few of those too. The iris, or the colored part of the eye, hers is maybe 50% of the eye as well. I'm going to give her a little gleam on that side. Now, her eyebrow is, is tight down to her eye. You see that? It's, it's very tight down. Let's give her a little more uh, lash at this point. We can add more details later. Remember, it's not about the details. It's about the general proportions and features. How, after all, would we recognize somebody from 100, 150, 200 yards away if we can't see detail very well? It has to be the general proportions present in their face. Now, here's that eyebrow coming really tight. I'm going to go line like that for Miss Haley, and then we can come over. We can extend it. Now, our eyes are fairly tight together. They're not super wide apart. Let's go up and over, okay? And since I went long on that lash, I better come out more on that. And again, and there's that big colored part of the eye again. I'm going to come back with this side of it right here. Okay, where's that other eyebrow? Well, it's tight down over her eye. It's angling out just a little bit. And I'm going to come in like that. And we've established Miss Haley's eyes. And I want to make a point right away is how far apart are the eyes? This is an important point. It's relativity and proportion, remember. 
and you can work and practice on the shapes but her eyes are fairly tight together you know the width of the eye is generally the same as the distance between the eyes so this width here I'm pointing out with my two pins is about that far if I move this over it's about the same as between the eyes there's the width of that eye width of an eye so that's generally the rule that you follow now some eyes are wider apart I want you to look at uh, this one here I don't want you to be distracted by who this is this is a famous person oops let me cover that hope you didn't see that and you see how wide apart those eyes are see the relativity is important here in this person's look this particular famous person's face you want to know who this is can anybody guess it's an actor uh, done a lot of movies, famous line of actors going way back. Barrymore, does that ring a bell, anybody? Uh, yes, Drew Barrymore. But notice again, aside of her prominent chin, we talked about features, but even without that, you see the eyes are wide apart. Okay, that's Miss Barrymore. I got another one for you. Uh, same idea, and let's cover up the name eyes wide apart once again you see the distance across the eye but you see it's a farther distance between the eyes than it is the width of the eye and that is none other than Rihanna okay those are two prominent entertainers with their eyes that are farther apart having said that let's move on to our drawing of Miss Haley so we're gonna come on down with the nose uh, there's nothing really super outstanding about the nose. It's just there. Uh, let's go uh, there. Notice I'm not overdoing the lines of the nose. Uh, it's merely shadows that we look at really in a face. There's not a lot of lines, but as character artists, we do use lines. Uh, nose upturned just a little bit. Do I need to give her a little bit of this? I think so. Maybe like that. Now here comes those thin lips we talked about. Prominent uh, teeth, we'll get to that, but we're not, we, we want to ignore the details of teeth. We want to look at the shape of the mouth, the width of the mouth, and uh, I'm going to come up and something like that. Okay, now that's down there, okay, again, where's the shape, the general shape? And, okay, and let's come around like that. So there's that general shape of the mouth. Uh, we might even have a little bit of this going on here. Okay, uh, we'll go ahead and give her a little bit of lip up there, but not a lot, you know. Okay, now you're wondering about the details of the teeth. Well, you have to practice a bit on that one, but uh, these are called medial incisors, these middle teeth here, uh, fairly prominent. Let's. Uh, Okay, maybe uh, come around a little bit more. We don't want to overdo the lines of teeth. All right, so uh, I still haven't shaped anything in around her, but I know she's got a lot of chin down here. Let's come on down with her chin, something like that. I got a fair amount of distance there for her chin. I'm going to come around. And around this way. Okay, there's that ear over there, and we got the uh, cheek lines, something like that. Okay, I want to come in with her forehead and her hair. Get plenty of head of hair here, just kind of sweeping across like that, and like that. Here comes hair. Okay, I can add some hair lines. And we're gonna come around. 
a little bit wavy. I can even thicken that face contour just a little bit there. Sometimes we can make lines a little thicker when we kind of show the general contour. Now I'm filling the hair in. Just give it a little bit of character. We've only got one ear showing. She's not wearing any jewelry, so I'll honor her on that one. Now, for the uh, mouth, just point out a couple of things from our Mad Magazine book. The parts of the mouth, we have the what's called the tubercle, which is that point. She has a, a, a prominent tubercle right here. It's kind of that bird's beak point of the top lip. Hers is fairly prominent. That's called the tubercle. This little area above the lip is called the philtrum, all right? I don't see much. There's, there may be a little bit. Sometimes we can show that like that and we don't see much of a furrow over the chin at least in the photograph we have of her although there probably is one um, we have what's called the <coughs> nasolabial furrow right here that's basically your cheek I put some lines for that for her uh, I would say even though it's not a great photograph, we can't see a lot, we could show a little bit more of her cheek there and coming around there. Just a little bit, not too much, all right? We have these uh, furrows under the eyes, we'll add a bit. Now her eyes are dark. I want to come in a little bit darker because she's got those dark eyes. I think uh, I'll darken up some more here with uh, and we're just gonna fill that in a little bit more there. Okay, and she does have the dark brows. We're probably going to need to go ahead and fill them in just a bit. Uh, I like to leave a little light in the brow. Uh, I need to do that other eye there, huh? Okay. Uh, not too bad. Let's give her a kind of a thin neck, about a third of what it would be. That's our license as a character artist. Uh, she's got the political look. We can give her a little American flag. And, you know, that, that's, that's pretty good for a basic lesson on drawing Miss Haley, who has thrown her hat in the ring. I want to give uh, her... And all of us, a sticker. Miss Haley, presidential candidate for 2024. Let's give you a keep going sticker and for our viewers in the audience. Hey, I'm glad you joined me today. This is Arthur with Arthur's America. Let's go take America one drawing at a time.